Konnichiwa. Hello everyone. This is Christopher in Japan. And today I'd like to talk about my uh, first experience with uh, an issue uh, assembling the Prusa i3 Mark III. Uh, this is an issue that uh, has been documented on the online manual and commented on by several, by many people I think. Uh, and it involves the freeness in the gliding movement of the y-axis. So this is with the belt installed and um, as you can hear it's pretty noisy. So I haven't powered this up because it's still the z-axis isn't assembled and the extruder I still have a lot of work to do. Um, but I'm just a little concerned that that noise may be with me when I end up powering the printer on. So I want to see if I can kind of reduce that a little bit. This is actually my second attempt to get the y-axis carriage assembled in a in a nice fashion with as little noise and a freest freedom of gliding a nice freedom of gliding of this carriage as possible there are three issues that people um, including joseph prusa himself seem to talk about and the first issue has to do with the centering of um, these uh, bearings, the linear bearings in these cutouts on the Y carriage. And I think um, in moving this around a little bit, um, these have come off center a bit more than I expected them to be. Um, so I'm going to look at that. And then a, a second issue seems to be the, uh, the track of one of the row of bearing balls inside these linear bearings are supposed to be uh, against the carriage and that's how I initially installed this the the linear bearings on the rails however I don't know in the course of moving this around a little bit whether that has changed so I'm going to take a look at that in my next attempt and then the third issue seems to be and this is really seems to be the most critical thing because um, between the first and second attempts, I noticed that I had screwed these M3 nylock nuts on a little too tightly. And so the recommendation that Joseph Prusa has given is that they just be flush with the surface of the carriage and then give it a 90 degree turn to tighten it. So, um, I already found one issue that I don't, I don't like using these needle, no, needle nose pliers to uh, adjust the nylock nuts. I find it awkward and I'm scraping into the anodized surface of this aluminum plate. So I find something like a hex wrench to be much better for doing this. And I think that's one thing I found that helped me to get the the gliding a little bit smoother. So I'm going to try taking off the um, belt and seeing, showing you what the ease of gliding is and what the noise is like then. And then I'm going to try doing the adjustments to these three aspects and see if I can get it to be a little bit better. So uh, let me uh, do that work and uh, then we will see what uh, the results are. Okay, so now I have unfastened the belt and the carriage is free to glide. And this is what the gliding is sounding like without the belt and the, and the freeness of the gliding being. Some people recommended putting this on a slant and seeing how easy it was 
for the carriage to slide down, whether it could actually just do it free fall. So that can do free fall as it is, as I've secured it now, and that's actually pretty good. And the noise isn't terrible here. Although I'm wondering what that's going to be like when I'm printing. Because a number of people have said that their y-axis is a little bit more noisy than they expected. So I'm going to try to do um, some slight uh, modifications to this and see if I can get that to be a little bit quieter. Okay, so now I have done three things. I have checked to see that the bearing balls are lined up on top next to the cutouts for them on the carriage. And that was, I had to actually lift the rails up and check the, pull it out and check that they were that way and they were pretty much aligned. I think I had to adjust one of them. And then I uh, loosened these nylock nuts and checked to see um, that the bearings are actually centered in these cutouts and they're pretty good right now. So then I retightened them and tried to observe the uh, notion of not tightening them too much so that I'm not deforming the bearings. Um, so that's the little trick with the 90 degrees after the nut is against the carriage. And so this is what the uh, bearings are sounding like without the belt um, on there now. It's not that much different from my second attempt, but I think this is pretty good. And it may not be as noisy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-strap the linear rails in. Okay, so that's my rail. All right, and I'm going to redo the belt now.
Okay, and I had made a mistake I had when I took off the belt this time. I didn't loosen the pulley. I loosened the end with a motor, so I need to, to make sure that that went on well. Maybe a little too loose now. We'll see if it passes the test with holding this motor with a wrench. And does it skip? Doesn't skip, but I um, actually don't think that that's on there solid. Yeah, okay. That should be good. All right. That's more the issue there. No, that's good. All right, it's got a little play in there, but maybe it doesn't need to be that tight. We'll see. So this is what it's sounding like now with the belt. It's still a little noisy, but it is a little bit better than the second time. Okay, and so just to recap, these should now be centered inside the cutouts, the bearings, and the, the tightness of these is not quite as tight as even my second attempt. And I'm using, trying to use a hex wrench rather than using those needle nose pliers that came with the kit. And it uh, looks like the balls inside these bearings are lined up against the cutouts in the cartridge so uh, the carriage so we should be good all right well thank you for watching and uh, I have installed or assembled the uh, X and now my next step will be to do the Y so I'll uh, be back in touch with you if I encounter another issue in this assembly Thank you for watching and thank you for all of your comments and questions and feedback on my previous videos. Very much appreciate hearing from you. See you next time.